I'm Peter Jones, editor at County Deer Stalking, the online magazine for deer stalkers. Today we're in Wales with Andrew Venables from WMS Firearms Training, where in the first of three short films, we'll aim to help you become a safer, more proficient hunter. Today, in our first film, we'll be looking at safety and how to safely handle a rifle. In our second film, we'll aim to provide you with some valuable tips on improving your technique when shooting from different firing positions. And in our third film, we'll be looking at distance shooting and how to take on targets at extended ranges. So first of all, safety. Andrew, thanks ever so much for inviting us over here today. My pleasure. Well, and perhaps I can sort of pick this up and tell you what I do. Mm -hmm. So we've got a typical stalking rifle here. Yeah, bolts open, yeah. Yep. Bolts open. Now, when I take a client stalking, I always insist on two golden rules. Mm. The first one is muzzle awareness. Absolutely. So I always say to people, whether this rifle is loaded or unloaded, never point the muzzle at someone. Mm. Fairly sort of simple stuff, but basically that means that when you're moving that rifle around, you yeah. should always move it around them. Mm -hmm. So downwards in that position, or possibly around them over the, up in an yeah. upward position. Yeah. Never, of course, in front of them. Mm. So that's my number one golden rule. My second golden rule is with regards to a safe backstop. Yeah. So I always say that if we're firing this gun, mm -hmm. we want to be sure that our shot is going to hit soft earth before the shot before it is out of our sight line. Yeah. So they're my number two. They're, they're my two basic rules. Mm -hmm. but I'm sure you've got several of your own. So perhaps I can ask you to tell us about some of those. Yeah, certainly, Peter. Thanks for that. Let me take the rifle off. Thanks. Thank you. Um, the whole thing is a continuous risk assessment. We run these shooting areas on the basis of four safety rules. Yeah. And you can take these anywhere in the world with you and perform well. The first one's really simple. If you're holding the rifle, if you've picked it up, if it's in your hands, you're in control of it. Mm -hmm. The first rule simple, it's loaded. No exceptions, sure. no excuses. It doesn't matter whether the bolt's been taken out, whether it's got a breech flag in and 25 range officers okay. have said it's empty. Yeah. It's loaded. If you're holding it, handle it as if it's loaded. Which takes us on to number two, where you came in, smack on the money. Don't point it at anything you don't want to see a ghastly steaming hole in. So if we want to get the rifle from here over to there, it would come that way. Sure. It could go around that way. Yeah. It could go this way, but we do point out when on hard ground, concrete, rock, yeah. tarmac, if it went off now, there'd be a lot of bullet That's fragments flying around. That's We'd need a pair of tweezers for a long time. So don't point. Rule number three is very simple. Daniel Craig, if you're watching, you can come to us and <laughs> polish up on this one. The finger does not go into the trigger guard at any time except when your sights are on a cleared, identified target okay. yep. or quarry. Yep. So if we imagine we're going over there, which is one of our safe areas, you can raise the rifle up. There's no reason to put your finger on the trigger until you're on target. There's no time benefit in going into it first. Sure. It's just asking for problems in movement. So the finger stays out of the trigger guard unless you're on a cleared target. It's a real life so, so basically, once you've acquired your target, yeah. then onto the trigger. There's at that always point. time to yeah, put the finger stuff. on the trigger. Okay. Sure. Number four is very simple, and it makes everybody responsible for their own actions. Rule number mm -hmm. four: you're responsible for every shot you take, mm -hmm. whether you meant to take it or not. I guess. So the person with the rifle is the one who's going to end up in court. You might have taken them deer stalking. I might have taken them out on the yeah. range. But if they bosh a shot up at 40 degrees and it lands on someone two miles away, yep. they did it. Yep. Okay. So rule number four, once again, you've got to clear from the muzzle to the target or quarry, left and right of the position, sure. yep. behind it. And also, if it doesn't hit the target or the quarry, where's it going to go afterwards? As you say, soft ground, you need an angle on the soil, you need a proper bullet stop behind. Sure. The horizon sure. is not acceptable. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's how we roll on our safety rules, but they tie sure. straight in with yours. Sure. There we go, some really simple but very effective and important safety guidelines whenever you're handling a rifle. Another crucial aspect of safety is the importance of considering the potential for ricochet. Hi, Andrew Venables here at WMS with Peter from County Deer Stalking. One of the safety issues we're looking into today is ricochets and backstops. What happens to bullets when you let them go? If they miss the target or if they hit the field behind a paper target? We can demonstrate it quite well here because we've got a quarry. Bear in mind this simulates a flinty field, hard ground, frozen ground. Soft ground becomes frozen, it's then hard. And we're going to demonstrate bullet skip. You're going to see the rounds hitting 
about two metres to the right of the Marco Polo sheep target and about a metre low. And if you keep an eye out for the puff and then the, 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 the impact at the back of the quarry, you're going to see something quite random over five shots. Bear this in mind when you're next setting up zero targets or when you're shooting at a deer on a flinty field with a village a thousand metres behind. Let's have a look and see what happens. So be very careful when you're shooting. So that's it for this episode. In our next film, we'll be looking at how to become a more proficient when shooting from different positions. In the meantime, if you'd like to learn more about WMS Firearms Training, then visit their website at www.wmsfirearmstraining.com.